smart cities are just a natural evolution of our global environment. These smart cities are utilizing sensor technology in order to be more efficient and that in turn provides better quality of life to their citizens. New technology is coming in from all different directions. So you need an open system that allows you to adapt to that new technology quickly, but also to work within the environment. We've worked with very large cities in the U.S., as well as cities in Latin America and in the Middle East on technologies for citywide deployment. It's interesting, the basis of where they start are different reasons. Some of it's public safety. Some of it is operational efficiency for traffic control and things like that. The reality is, long term, you're going to want all of that. As cities continue to evolve, they're making large investments. And these investments in infrastructure, for example, can be leveraged to do a lot more. One of the big challenges in cities is congestion. So if buses are utilizing specific lanes, you can actually control those traffic lights and move those buses along. Now you're giving back to your citizens minutes and that's a very tangible benefit. You're starting to integrate HVAC systems with lighting systems, with sensors in cameras and security systems. And you have all these different systems now that you're starting to link together and use for information, for efficiencies, for people protection, and all these types of things. There may be an organization that has data that's very valuable to me. If I'm not collaborating, with those different organizations, I'm never going to know that that data is there. I can take that contextual data and add it to information I have and make very valuable insights into things that maybe I can become more operationally efficient. Maybe I can start predicting more failures if I have information from the, the traffic control system that's feeding into the SCADA information that I have. Cameras by themselves do not provide security. But those cameras can now have embedded technology and you can do a lot of the advanced analytics and, and advanced processing at the camera. So we've got cities in South America utilizing cameras not only for traffic management, they can also capture license plates, they can also manage traffic, they can also automatically give tickets. Well, the misconceptions is that it's easy. It's not easy. There, you know, technology is constantly changing. So Annexter is a company that has long-term experience in helping customers figure out all this technology, deploy it on a global basis, but also think about the future and where is technology going and how do they prepare for that. My team is a global team that works virtually around the world to support and partner with our field sales organization and deliver solutions. When you're building out a network infrastructure for a smart city, you have to build it based on standards. The importance of a utility grade network coupled with standards and best practices is key to deploying a sustainable citywide network. In the Ukraine, there was actually the first ever confirmed cyber hack that brought down an entire grid. So these are real targets now, and I think a lot of the regulatory bodies are looking at how to drive better practices in cybersecurity, specifically in the power grid, because it's now a target of terrorist attacks. Cities cannot wait for something to happen to then react because anything today that is on a network is vulnerable to a hack. In a smart city, connectivity is extremely important. You have to have a performance guarantee. And if you think of the latency that's required, you can't afford to have any drop packets or any downtime when you're looking at applications that require one millisecond or less of speed or latency to get through the network. The enablement of IOT and what we would call IOCT or the Internet of City Things is really important. The data that they're gathering and the intelligence that they are gathering is feeding into the big data that's allowing cities to make agile and smart decisions. There might be 4G and LTE investments. The future is definitely in 5G, which is going to bring gigabit technology to the edge. A lot of this is driving the movement from being reactive into being proactive and in many cases cities are becoming predictive and now this is really driving a better quality of life for their citizens. We have many challenges today that as companies and as state officials and country officials have to think about. And how do we protect our citizens? How do we create a better environment? How do we reduce emissions? Technology is the foundation to help you do these things. We're on the brink of very big changes but it will take time and the development happens over time.